Good evening guys, what's up? Once again, welcome back to the session that we were having in the last class and that we are going to continue today, right? So, if I'm not wrong, in the last class, I was teaching you something related to Lewis dot structures, right? So, we were going to, like, we were discussing the entire details about how the Lewis dot structures could be drawn for atoms, for different molecules, and how the Lewis dot structure were quite static, they were quite rigid when it comes to the octet completion, right? We had seen so many examples in which I told you how can you select the central atom and how can you select the side atoms, right? And thus, on the basis of that particular thing, I gave you a few examples also. So, in today's class, as per you can see on the board, we have to cover something related to the details of covalency. And we'll be able to cover the details of covalency only and only if you will be able to understand what were the drawbacks of Lewis dot structure, right? And what were different, let's say some different examples of Lewis dot, Lewis dot structures which uh, were not very common, okay? Which, di which did not satisfy the Lewis rule very simply. So we will first look at those examples, we'll first look at the exceptions and then we'll finally come on to the concept of covalency, okay? So without wasting time, let me directly begin up with the topic and the topic first I will be writing is to draw the Lewis dot structures. Let's say for example, I'm asking you to draw the Lewis dot structure for a molecule which is carbon dioxide, okay? How will you draw? So what will you say? There is one carbon atom and there is one oxygen atom. You know, right, that the covalency of carbon and you need to know the covalency of oxygen. So as per your knowledge, you must say, right, that carbon is having a covalency of 4, oxygen is having a covalency of 2, right? Moreover, we also know one thing that carbon is less electronegative, whereas when you consider oxygen, it will be more electronegative. So carbon should be chosen as the central atom. Right? So once I ask you to choose carbon as a central atom, then we will draw the structure. Carbon is having a total of 4 electrons in the outermost shell. So I will show like 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Whereas each oxygen atom that I will draw will be having a total of 6 electrons. I have shown it like this. Right? And for the left hand side oxygen, I will show it like Six, right? So each oxygen needs a total of two more electrons to complete the octet. So this oxygen shares electrons from carbon. This oxygen shares electrons with carbon. And now carbon was already having four. So it wants another four. So it will be taking from the two oxygens. And thus giving C double bond O double bond O. And this is a structure of carbon dioxide as we can predict it from the Lewis dot structures. Okay, now let me tell you, Lewis was very much particular and he said that every atom should be completely having its octet. I mean, Lewis was very particularly saying that octet completion is must, octet completion is must. But then a list of compounds were found out where the octet was not completed but still the compounds were stable. So according to Lewis, only those compounds were found to be, were considered to be stable in which their octet will be completed. However, there were certain compounds where the octet was not completed. They have deficiency of electrons or these were the compounds having incomplete octet and they were also given the name as hypovalent compounds. So 
so when i was considering the hypovalent com hypovalent compounds or the compounds having incomplete octet or the compounds having deficiency of electrons let me give you a few examples example number 1 is bh3 see here boron is having three electrons in the valence shell each hydrogen is coming with one electron so hydrogen gets one 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 right the duplet of hydrogen is complete now if i ask you to talk about boron it's having a to uh, a complete total of six electrons but still there are only six electrons that will be possessed by boron but we know right bh3 is stable bh3 does exist the another example i can give you is bcl3 is bf3 alcl3 so all these compounds are what all these compounds should not be stable if you consider in the term of lewis so if you will be taking the lewis theory then according to the lewis theory we say that only the compounds which have complete octet should be stable but all the compounds like for example we do bh3 we do bf3 we do bcl3 we do alcl3 we do alf3 so these are all the compounds where the octet is not complete and when the octet is not complete then but still they are stable let me just ignore the term alf3 i'll tell you why i am ignoring it so see when such compounds are available so the lewis then started calling them as exceptions he said that in almost 98% of the cases my rule will follow but there are certain exceptions where the compound may be stable but uh, let's say the octet was not complete but he couldn't tell us why the compounds are stable otherwise we should got have answer right although according to lewis theory the compound should not be stable but why they are stable but lewis couldn't tell anything like that so this was the first disadvantage of the lewis theory that there were certain compounds which were available having the deficiency of electrons or having incomplete octet or which were known as hypovalent compounds but then there was no explanation given by lewis right now moving on to the another category of compound and these are the set of compounds which have excess of electrons and i think we have done one example in the last class as well so moving on to second category of compounds which have excess of electrons and these are those compounds where there is expansion of octet and these compounds are also known by the name hypovalent structures so as per all the three names suggest excess of electrons or maybe they are known as hypovalent structure or let's say they are known as expansion of octet that means they have more than 8 electrons in the valence shell and and i remember i have given you the examples like pcl5 we have sf6 right let us say we have if7 i am asking you to draw the structure of sf6 and let's say how many electrons are there in the case of sulfur so you know right sulfur is bigger sulfur has a covalency of 6 whereas fluorine is small and highly electronegative so fluorine should be considered as the side atom whereas sulfur should be considered as a central atom so see so we'll draw six electrons around sulfur and now you take fluorine so we have another fluorine we have another fluorine so now you should only practice and you should know how to write down the structures i am writing it down properly but you don't have to do it again and again right now see fluorine each fluorine is having seven electrons in the valence shell to complete the octet it wants one more electron so start sharing from sulfur
So now you can see that fluorine is having a total of 8 electrons and not one fluorine but all the fluorine atoms are having 8 electrons in the valence shell. Now let us look at what is happening about with sulfur. So sulfur was having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It took one from fluorine. It took one another. So 7, 8. One another, 9. One another, 10. One another, 11. And one another, 12. So now it appears as if sulfur is having a total of 12 electrons in the valence shell. If we would have moved according to Lewis, then sulfur should be having only 8 electrons in the valence shell, but it is having an axis of 4 electrons, which is wrong, right? So this is the reason uh, that, I mean, so Lewis was not able to give any justification to such compounds. He said that probably certain compounds may be there, but all of them will be exceptions which are having more electrons in the valence shell rather than having the octet complete, okay? But then there was no explanation given by Lewis. Not only this, there was an, there were another set of compounds which existed, which also Lewis could not explain. So see, according to Lewis, all these compounds should have been unstable because the octet of the central atom is not complete. But what I'm saying is, later on new theories were given and according to the new theories, you can now easily prove the stability of such compounds. Moreover, with experimental results, with their experimental availability, with their natural availability, you get to know that these compounds do exist in nature and they are stable also, right? Now let us move on to third category of compounds, which are known as odd electron species. or these are known as odd electron molecules, okay? Let us take the case of, for example, NO2, okay? And now let us see how the structure of NO2 can be drawn. So there is only one nitrogen, whereas there are two oxygens, right? And you know that compared the electronegativity of nitrogen and oxygen, nitrogen is lesser electronegative than oxygen. Not only this, if I ask you to compare the covalency of nitrogen and oxygen, you will figure out that nitrogen is having a higher covalency compared to oxygen. So based upon these two things, you can say nitrogen can be taken as the central atom, right? Now let us see nitrogen is having a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons in the valence shell, okay? And to complete its octet, nitrogen needs 3 more electrons in the valence shell. Now let us talk about oxygen. The oxygen which is coming is having 6 electrons in the valence shell. The another oxygen atom which came... was also having six electrons in the valence shell, right? Now see, oxygen needed a total of eight electrons, six were there, so two other it will take away from nitrogen and thus making it become stable, right? Now nitrogen has got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nitrogen is in need of just one electron. Now, but this oxygen is in need of two electrons. So if both of them try to share one, one electron, let's say, So maybe I can form something like this, fine. But then also this is like this oxygen is not completely satisfied and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nitrogen is satisfied but oxygen is not at all satisfied. So this type of bond formation is not possible in the case of NO2. What other thing I can do here? See carefully and try to understand. So nitrogen is having a total of 5. And oxygen is having a total of 6. Now it appears, right, that ni uh, oxygen wants to become stable. So maybe nitrogen from one end thinks, okay, oxygen, I am in love with you, so I give one pair of electron of mine to you, and let's say we are making a coordinate bond. You remember in the last class I discussed about
So now this oxygen is stable because of covalent bond. This oxygen is stable because of the coordinate bond. But what about nitrogen? Nitrogen is now again having a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons only, right? That means there is one electron which could be called as the odd electron. This is one electron which is unpaired, which is unbonded. It is not even bonded to anyone, it is not even paired up, so it is very difficult for a nitrogen with a kind of free radical or with a nitrogen with an odd electron to exist stably. So it's not stable, I mean the structure is not at all stable, okay. So this is one of the, uh, again the drawback of Lewis dot structure that it could not explain the stability of odd electron species, okay. Not only this, there is one more odd electron species that you can draw and let me tell you, there are so many, let me draw one another and this time I am asking you to consider nitrogen monoxide. Let's see how this can be drawn. So we have nitrogen, we have oxygen. Each nitrogen is having one, two, three. 4, 5 electrons, right? And oxygen is having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And oxygen needs a total of 8. So what oxygen will do? Oxygen will ask this nitrogen to give 2 more, right? So now oxygen is having a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And becomes happy, right? Whereas if I ask you to look at nitrogen, how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, only 6, 7. So still it is unhappy because one of the electron is again unpaired. Okay, so not only this, there were other examples also which were available which uh, could not be explained by the Lewis dot structures. So uh, according to the Lewis dot structures, they were simply considered as exceptions. But what happened in the beginning when they were considered exceptions, we would have found one compound, we would have found another compound, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, so many compounds we found. But then there was a list of compounds which were not satisfied by Lewis. So finally, we understood that no, there may be some drawbacks with the Lewis dot structure. So that theory may not be a properly furnished theory and we need to look for another alternative or another theory, right? So this was about the Lewis dot structures and what were the drawbacks which were faced by Lewis dot structures, okay? So quickly note down everything which is there on the board so that now I can start telling you something related to inert pair configuration. But before that, note it down. Okay, so I think you would have done this much. Now let's continue further. But before I start anything further related to the Lewis dot structures, I mean the drawbacks of Lewis dot structure, let me